Okay, we will go ahead and get going. Um, this is, I believe, the first time that we've used Meet Echo for a virtual meeting, so things are going to be a little bit different. Um, I hope you all have tested your audio in advance. Um, so with that, um, there is a notes page. Um, if you go to the, I just sent out the link to the upcoming meetings page that has all of the uh, icons for the various things that you might need for this meeting, um, including the notes page. Um, Dieter, if you wouldn't mind putting the link into the chat for the note for the notes page so people can see it. Um, yes, I will do that. Um, so with that, um, this is an official IETF meeting. All of the IETF policies that are documented in the note well um, that you have, um, all of you look to be familiar participants. So I know that you are aware of the note well. Uh, please, if you have any questions regarding any of these policies or processes, uh, please contact Dieter or I or our AD, Eric. Um, just a couple of <coughs> admin notes. Um, we will be taking draft minutes in the online notes tool, so uh, please help uh, contribute to make sure that they're accurate and complete. Um, this has uh, turned into the fastest way for us to get our minutes published, so um, we would uh, appreciate people contributing. Uh, blue sheets will be managed by uh, the fact that you've signed into this meeting via Meet Echo. Um, so we don't need to do that separately. Uh, we do have a Q tool, which is uh, the uh, raising of the hand in the bottom bar. Um, so please use that. Um, also be clear, concise, and respectful, and please act according to our IETF code of conduct. Um, this is the agenda that we put out, um, and our intention is to primarily focus on the two working group last calls that we recently had, and then to check to see if there's any ongoing uh, updates on ongoing work items. Um, and David, I see you're in the queue, go ahead. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask if it's, I know I'm a bit late with this and I should probably have sent you an email beforehand, but uh, if it was possible to have a short, maybe five or 10 minute discussion as well on uh, MTS pool stuff. Uh, we're from our side, we've been working on a prototype on that so, uh, sort of stuff. And I want to know whether people are interested in taking it into the ITF or not at all at this stage. Um, we can absolutely add that. Um, and we'll, um, we'll put it towards the end, but thank you for that. I, I think that's an important topic. It's one of the big barriers to uh, NTS deployment. So. Um, okay, are there any other agenda bashes? No? Okay. So um, with that, um, we have three documents that are currently beyond the working group at this stage, uh, updating the NTP registries. Uh, you will have seen that Rich has done a number of updates and corrections. Um, and I believe this is ready for the uh, next step, Eric. And I think it is in your, um, I think the next, hold on one second. I believe the next step is you, but. Um, that it will be, I haven't had a chance to catch up since, uh, since Prague. Yeah, it, it's just recently been published, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that one is uh, waiting for AD approval of the changes that Rich made very recently. Um, the second one is the enterprise profile. This has uh, two um, two things that it, it has been updated. Uh, it has been updated to address Eric's comments. And so at this stage, uh, Eric needs to review it and I need to do the, I need to update the shepherd write up. Uh, so there's two outstanding topics on that one. And Kronos has passed beyond the IESG and is now in the RFC editor queue. Um, 
Any questions on any of these documents? No. Um, oops, wrong direction. All right, so with that, um, we're going to switch to the NTP over PTP working group last call results. Um, there was a late breaking set of comments on this. Um, and there was also not a lot of comments on it. So um, the um, I am inclined to, uh, I know that the comments just came out four hours ago, Marisol, I don't know if you have any, if you want to comment on the comments that you've received. Uh, just the suggestions looked good to me. I think we can make it. OK. Um, this working group last call received, um, it really only received three responses. Uh, I would, what I would like to do is to extend it for one week and uh, encourage some of the other people in the working group to respond. Um, there has been no opposition to the publication of it, um, but I would like to see a little bit more response, uh, in particular from the 1588 community. Um, so uh, is, are there any questions or comments on the working group last call? I don't see Doug on this call. He's usually here. Um, I believe you also asked a question about an organizational ID for uh, the IETF, uh, and uh, Doug was going to look into that, uh, so we will have to um, wait on that. Any questions or comments on this one? For those of you on the call who have not commented on the mailing list, it, it is very helpful to the chairs if you were, if you review and respond to these working group last calls, um, we really need to be able to document that we have working group consensus and uh, crickets does not really equal working group consensus. It's a short document. Um, and so I would I would appreciate people taking a quick look. So the action out of this meeting is we will extend it for one week. Um, any questions or comments? Uh, go ahead, David. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, how you came to the number of three approvals. I counted four last time. Uh, so maybe there's something wrong with the mailing list in this case, or? Oh, sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't notice the one that you just did three hours ago. <laughs> sorry, uh, <laughs> a little bit late. <laughs> So thank you, David. There are four people who have commented on it, realizing this is, of course, a small group. Um, yeah, I stopped at the one with actual comments. So, um, and Ira, Ira, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, <clears throat> apologizing. Uh, NTP uh, work group last calls were actually my uh, high priority for next week, but next week will be the first quiet week I've had in six months without a break of ISO and SAE and IETF and trusted computing group specs and reviews and meetings. Ah, well, um, it has been a, bit, a very busy period, but thank you. We look forward to your review. Um, so we will extend this to, um, and we'll just extend it to next Friday. And we'll send a few private emails to see if I can harangue a few more people. I would suggest extending to the end of the year, <clears throat> given that quiet week, some people actually get something done between Christmas and New Year. I guess the difference between end of next week and December 31st is not that much. So we'll go ahead and extend it to December 31st. Thank you. Um, that does, of course, mean I expect to see some quality reviews in that time. So the um, 
Next topic then is the NTPV5 requirements working group last call. Uh, this was an informational document to help guide our work. Um, there has been a fair amount of discussion on the mailing list. Um, is Jane, okay, James is here, okay, good. Uh, James, do you want to comment on what you believe the next steps for this are? Uh, I'm uncertain as to what the next steps are. Okay. Um, well, we have gotten a fair amount of response to this one. I think all of the, uh, there, are, there are a number of edits to be done. Uh, there is only one person who has spoken in opposition to it. Um, and I have not fully parsed that whole message yet. Um, Go ahead, David. Yeah, I just had a question on the opposition. Um, so far, there seems to nobody seems to have reacted to it. Um, it primarily seems to be um, a, a return to the, the viewpoint of we shouldn't we should be controlling basically the entire ecosystem, which, as far as I can tell, over the past few meetings. Uh, is not quite where the consensus is, but I'm not sure if we have enough consensus to just already to just say that out loud right now. Uh, and as a response, when we when we eventually send this on to the IESG, I can provide an in-depth um, rebuttal in the mailing list if that's desired, but that might open up a bit of a bear pit of a discussion with Harlem again. I'm not sure we want that if we already have consensus. Um, so let's 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 separate the two sets of responses that we have. We have the response from Harlem, which is a hard no. Uh, and then we have the response from Christoph, which is a number of edits um, and some questioning on tone and intention of the document. Um, go ahead, James. I, 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 what, I haven't been able to go through the emails that Christoph has sent today. I, I just haven't had the time for it, but the, the problem that I face with it is an, an ongoing lack of clarity of what would ha what is being proposed to be changed in order to uh, uh, address the concerns. Some of the some of the concerns are suggestions of reopening the discussions that have long since concluded, and some of them are just small nits that of uh, the inclusion of a, a, an additional word here or there, which I, I'm not uh objected to this there's, there's quite a lot of things that that need to be addressed and at the same time i'm also a little bit concerned that if we spend a lot of time work a lot more time working on this um this is time that we could have been spending uh helping miroslav and the actual protocol specification itself get over the line so i'm, I'm really if there's anything i want out of this is to if there are valid changes that need to be edited, and again, I haven't gone through the emails from this morning, then we, we I think we really need to time box them down as to not open up the, the bear traps of discussions when we could be doing something more productive. Right. Um, Christoph, do you, um, do you want to comment on your set of comments at all? Do you have any? Uh, sure. I hope my audio is working. Hello, everybody. Chris was speaking. Um, yeah, the the set of emails that I sent out today, it's a bit piecemeal. I'm a bit uh, distracted these days. Um, but I hope I, I, I covered, I think, 80% of the, the things that need covering. I, I mostly forgot um, to comment at all at, on, on my like nits with section three. Um, but with everything else, I've really tried to um, boil it down to kind of concrete suggestions. I think in most cases, 
honestly, a sentence here or a sentence there uh, clarifying is this is really all I would need to say. Okay, this is this is clear enough. Um, like in effect, I, I think that should clear most of it up. Um, I want to remind all of you that there's also been a comment by Daniel, um, which is not really a hard no, but kind of a strong doubt about um, the way going forward. Just like for the record. Um, yeah, I I think like Martin and I could both also work on like whenever it's not clear what we want, we can definitely just supply text that we suggest that we think would be better. Um, I'm also I'm also seeing in some cases that yeah maybe it's maybe it's better to not open the discussion back up where we just already have consensus, even though in at least one case, I kind of strongly doubt that what we are noting down as consensus is really what the working group is like is converging on right now, but like maybe it is. And, and really James, you should know better than I uh, in, in that case. So yeah, definitely those, none of those I, I will make blocking issues for myself. Some of the editorial stuff I would really like to get in before um, this goes to ISG. Okay. Um, I should probably like, do the caveat that I don't think Martin or I will have just time to have all the suggestions ready before the end of the year. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a regrettable just fact of the matter. Go ahead, Ira. I wanted to comment. I meant to write an email. Yeah, in what tower? Um, on the uh, already comment on the um, <clears throat> wide use of conformance imperatives that is required, must, um, not just should, um, in an informational document, um, and why the document isn't actually called NTPV5 design requirements and not merely requirements. Um, because I'm very concerned about the use of musts um, in and required in an informational RFC. I I believe it there's a strong ambiguity there about how how heavily that constrains the eventual protocol, which I don't think it ever should. I think it should recommend with shoulds, but I don't like the use of must. That's my comment. David. Yeah, I had a question for uh, Christoph around uh, his comments. Am I correct in uh, in reading your emails that your main point of concern around consensus is around the leap seconds stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So just to then maybe give a quick comment on that in hopes of assuaging some of your fears is uh, we've been uh, as an implementer of NTP, we've been working on implementing also that part. Um, it's not that far along yet in our implementation. In principle, with the design decisions we've taken right now in the in NTP v5, which is basically to just all make this a part of the time scales system, so just a general system where you can choose to provide other things than UTC. I that that feels like something that a lot of people have converged on as a decent solution last i've talked to people about it and it seems to solve all the requirements that we set there as well and it doesn't seem too onerous to be honest uh, yeah sorry maybe i said yes too too soon um, my concern is around the noted consensus on specifically leap smearing is that also covered and, and do you think that's like not a big deal as far as you've, you've seen because that seems like it might come back to bite us that we, we make a, uh, a bunch of provisions to, to like support leap smearing which i'm i'm not a fan of but this is personal opinion um, mm -hmm. and also it could just be abolished quite soon and then we still have a requirement or at least a, a soft commitment to always supporting leap smearing and and have all clients always support the fact that some servers might be smearing others might not and that seems like a whole bunch of complexity um that maybe we won't want to support in i don't know five or ten or something years maybe before ntpv6 um and that we still kind of have to because we said we would 
Uh, oh, I think that that then we might have a misunderstanding of what we mean by supporting leap smearing. So for me and how I read the spec is that supporting leap smearing is means that we can I, a identify that it's happening so that a client that receives leap smear time can identify it and either ignore it or use it as it wants essentially, which is what the whole uh, time scale system does. It basically allows the server to say, hey, uh, watch out, I'm providing you with leap smear time. And any of the details beyond that are, for the most part, then an implementation specific uh, thing. So what, how you want to smear, et cetera, uh, where I'm willing to do the work uh, to make, um, to standardize one of the most commonly used of the internet, at least, time skills for this, namely what Google does. Um, that's not that hard to specify out, um, but the software support could then be, yeah, you don't support that time scale, and which is fine. So I don't foresee the problems you foresee there then, I guess. Right. I mean, that that does kind of calm my, fear, calm my fears. Um, if Like if a valid way for a client to adhere to that requirement that we wrote down is to just know when the server is saying that they leap smear and just then ignore the server. And I guess it's really not a bunch of code um, and maybe won't come to bite us or at least the bite won't be that bad. Sure, that, that that's a valid point. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, putting Harlan's comments aside for a moment, um, we will extend the working group last call on this one uh, till the end of the year as well. Um, and um, I, I know, Christoph, that, that you and, and Martin are quite busy, but we, we need to get, um, I, I don't wanna hold this up forever. I'd like to get it moving, so. Go ahead, David. Yeah, on that point, and also to maybe uh, unload James a bit, if, if he feels that it's quite a heavy thing to go through all their comments. I have some time tomorrow or next week. I'm not entirely sure it will be tomorrow, but definitely next week that I could spend to just going over your emails uh, and try to um, summarize them, figure out what the status of the various things is. Um, which would maybe lighten the load on both Christoph and James a, a bit, I guess, if that's wanted. Um, I, I, I won't decline any offers for help. Um, it, yeah, for me, the big problem here is just trying to gain clarity over what would need to be changed and, and, and addressing the concerns in a timely manner. Um, I've I've got time tomorrow as well to to uh, have a look at this and to also look through the backlog of emails. Okay. Um. I'm still like at least working and not on vacation until next Wednesday, so anything that we've like kind of discussed beforehand, I. I'm sure I can also make time for a web call if like some clarification is, is needed and then maybe we report on the mailing list afterwards. Um, maybe that can speed things up if you guys have time. Um, yeah, uh, like anything that we can get done until then is of course great because after that I'm just on vacation until like way into the next year. Okay, so um, given that what I'd like to do is finish the rest of the agenda and um, James, maybe uh, you and David and uh, Christoph can use whatever remaining time we have to go ahead and do some of that real-time discussion today, if that's okay. I guess you said you hadn't read the comments yet. That makes it kind of tough, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I'd prefer to do this tomorrow when I've got a bit more time and it won't end up on YouTube. Okay, oh, that's, that's also true. <laughs> I always forget about the YouTube thing. All right, so um, 
that handles those. Uh, the there is another uh, there is an email from Harlan which came in this morning uh, who is opposed to this document. I have not had time to review this email. Um, I think um, what I'd like to do is uh, Eric, if I can if I could uh, impose upon you to help um, with a response to that, it would be good. Um, sure, go ahead and uh, shoot me an email or something or we can sync up. Okay, that would be fine. Um, I'm sorry to not raise my hand, um, but th there is, have any of you guys gotten the mail from Daniel as well regarding the NTPv5 requirements draft? I uh, the one I got was only sent to me, and I was just assuming it was going to the mailing list as well. I, I haven't. I was actually trying to find it when you were speaking, and I, I yeah. haven't seen anything from Daniel. So I, I will ask... contact him and ask him if he wanted to send it to the mailing list, and if yes, then to please do that. Okay. Yeah, that would that would be very helpful. Um, I, I would say with the the uh, resolution of Christoph's comments and with a way forward on Harlan, it seems to me that there's pretty good working group consensus on this document. We just need to wrap it up. Um, any other questions or comments on this document? No. Thank you for everybody who commented and thank you, James, for hanging in there with this. Um, so we have Three additional work items I was going to mention just to see if there was any, if the authors had any updates that they wanted to provide. I know that we're not that far off from the uh, um, the meeting we had in at the beginning of November, which was you know almost five weeks ago now, kind of crazy. Um, but uh, Miroslav, do you have any updates on the NTPv5 protocol spec? Mm, no update. There was, I think, just one change in the Git repository. Yeah. And okay. Um, I'd like to remind people to please uh, comment on this document on the mailing list. That would be very helpful. Um, <coughs> uh, do we have any updates on rough time? Yes. So uh, there's been some activity on the mailing list. Uh, Chris Patton's gone through and found a bunch of infelicities of what I've written. Um, <clears throat> so I'll fix those sometime and submit a new version. Um, but people should look at it. And uh, we, we've, we've made a lot of edits after uh, San Francisco. So it's the, the introductory section has now been completely revised and all that stuff's already also happened. Uh, so take okay. a look if you haven't in a while. Uh, David? Yeah, I've been quietly looking a bit at that draft, and we've also done some uh, experiments in London around the, the cryptography used um, in that, in the uh, rough time stuff. To me, it feels like at the moment that's a very complicated solution to what is, is in essence a simple thing and i was wondering a bit to what degree do we want to keep it as a fully separate time synchronization protocol uh, which to me feels like overkill and whether we should maybe also just discuss slash um further explore the options of making the cryptography <coughs> use in rough time that that seems to be its main feature um and 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 just add that, bolt that on NTP uh, and, and leave all the timing stuff uh, with NTP instead of trying to manage two specifications for that. But I was wondering a bit what people are thinking about that before shooting in an email and maybe lighting the mailing list on fire again. Um, yeah, I know Krister is not here. Um, but Christopher is going to get in the, uh, go ahead, Chris. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm a little new to NTP, um, I, but I wanted to give like an implementer's perspective. Um, 
I, I work at Cloudflare um, and we deployed an, an early version, uh, the, the original Google version of rough time. Um, we recently added support for the latest draft. Um, I would, I think, I think uh, I, I'd like to see this draft stabilize and and get to RFC sooner rather than later because there are like a lot of there are real people using this protocol right now, um, and I'd like to I'd like I I'd, I'd appreciate it if 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 we if we have like a, a consensus like this is good enough this is like not too complicated um, that we can start stabilizing the draft um, I, like I, I I would not I would not support like a big change of uh, uh, in direction. James. Um, not to open a can of worms, but one thing that's notwithstanding is the ecosystem um, in older, there, there was a draft in the past that was a starting point for um, if we're going to be trying to observe, uh, trying to observe malpheasants out in the wild in, in some mechanisms. Um, an open question to the working group is is it that something we're going to be doing because that that is a key feature of the rough time protocol as it stands and if we're not going to do that work then there's definitely going to be questions raised about whether or not we need to keep a lot of the the merkle trees and such around so the merkle tree is actually about batch signing um it's it doesn't actually have to do with the kind of the chaining across uh, requests and responses. Um, uh, I think my personal view is that the draft that like specifies the protocol bits doesn't necessarily need to delve into that. I think it would be a good idea like uh, to start working on a kind of a separate draft that, uh, you know, either describes in more detail like what, how clients could, would actually use rough time. Um, uh, maybe specify like, you know, kind of uh, like HTTP endpoints for for uh, kind of learning about what servers are available and things like that. But um, I would say I would not want to I would not want to I, I would I, I don't I don't think it'd be a good idea to do that in the in the in the current draft. I think it's scope no, way. just just to clarify, Chris, that there was a separate document called rough time ecosystem, which which was starting to have some of those subjects, but there was a, a more to do blocks than there were actual texts. My, yeah. my question is, 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 is what to do with, with that expired draft and, and et cetera? Good question. So yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't uh, clear to everybody, but I, I should probably figure out the market the data tracker we're abandoning the, the the ecosystem draft because you know having a draft describing things you want people to do when there aren't people who are doing them doesn't really work um so we folded some of that material into the rough time draft and a lot of it is going to be up to implementers of clients and sort of what sort of reporting mechanisms they put in themselves um so you know, my hope is that once people start deploying this, they'll be like, "We we need this," and we'll actually come together and, and make make it happen. Okay, just to be absolutely clear, Watson, you are not planning to continue the ecosystem draft, and you've moved content from that into the protocol specification draft. Yes. Okay. I did put a link to the uh, ecosystem draft in the uh, notes for those who weren't familiar with what it was before. Um, all right. Um, I, I'm I'm sure that the uh, so Christer, who was at the last IETF meeting. Uh, in the hackathon and also in the main meeting, also presented at RIPE about this work. Um, so I think um, so. Chris and James, not Chris and James. Chris and uh, Watson, how far do you think you are from having a document you believe to be stable? Oh, David, are you in the queue? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, and. So one of the reasons why I was 
saying the thing about the, uh, the maybe folding this into NTP um, and not not as a main part of NTP v5. Let me be clear on that. Just as specifying a uh, extension field for NTP v4 is that the current draft does a lot of stuff around leap seconds, around time scales, around um, or, or very recent draft at least did all these things. Um, which would need, in my view, a lot of discussion, and we risk having a lot of those discussions twice. Um, once for rough time and once for NTP. And that's just, to me, seems like a lot of waste of time. So if we want to stabilize this, we either, I would either think that we would need to be going back towards a far, far simpler protocol that, that really does only the rough stuff and not all the precision stuff that seems to have snuck in there. Um, or we need to do the, or I would strongly suggest that we go for a, a, a simpler thing, but I'm, you saying this is currently used and what kind of use cases is it used and how rough is rough for the, these people? Because the current protocol spec allows a lot more than 10 second precision. I, I, I think, and maybe, maybe I did double this. One of the changes we made out of San Francisco was removing all the subsecond stuff. So that 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 the, you know that change has been made. We're really focusing on the problem of you boot up on a system with no clock. What do you do? Chris, did you have something? Oh, no, he's out of the queue. No, uh, I was going to say the same thing as Watson. Okay, go ahead, David. And then I have one final question. I also saw some stuff about uh, web uh, use of this and key rotation. Um, that feels like we're moving in a direction that we're basically building a second root certificate system, which I'm sure is going to get us some lovely comments from the security people, um, which, which also feels so to what degree um, is, is that something that we want to support and need to support to, to what degree it, because for me it seems like if you go for the boot up problem then you need long-term keys that you basically don't rotate um so so i was wondering then on that for a little bit no you need to, i mean at, at some point if you want your server to have a stable address you you need to have a way, but I think saying key rotation is really a misnomer. It's really sort of key multiplexing. How do you serve, how do you know what key the client's expecting so you can use the right one for what you have? Oh, bless you, go ahead, Christopher. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I was the one who raised this. Um, um, it's not, I, I don't, I, I obviously, I, I, I tried to make the point that I don't think we should have, like, we don't want to end up with the same, like, op, like operational security requirements for rough time root keys as we have for, like, uh, root certificates in the web PKI. Um, that's definitely a direction we don't want to go in. Um, the proposal is, is kind of, yeah, basically to, allow one service, allow one like endpoint to support two keys at the same time. And I, I, I don't think we should like try to define how, um, yeah, I guess like how, cause like we're not, the, the problem that we're talking about is like the problem that browsers have to solve for, for the web PKI, which is like maintaining root stores. And um, I don't, I don't think we need to take on that problem. Um, and I, yeah, um, yeah. Go ahead, James. Um, I, I think, I think having multiple case support is good, but I think what is in fact probably more important is having some further clarity around the temporal keys that are used for a deployment, in particular, um, the min, uh, the min t and the max t. I think the tags are. Um, 
seen a lot of deployments that just sort of set those to wild and woolly values and some guidance would probably be appreciated in that as, as just sort of one example. Um, because if we're not going to have something as uh, well-defined and as uh, huge as, as uh, you know, the cab forum setting how this stuff is, then we need to have something ourselves um, even something basic written down so that implementers and deployers don't so, so to minimize mishandling of key material. Yeah, if you'd like to suggest text, uh, that, that would be welcome. Okay. Um, so back to the my original question uh, for Watson and Christopher, do you have a time frame for the next update, published update? Um, <coughs> that could definitely arrive in January. Okay. And do you expect this might be the draft that'll be ready for working group boss call? I hope so, but I've hoped that before and been wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, all right, so thank you all for the update on that. Uh, NTS for PTP, uh, Dieter and I got an email from Martin who is not available for the call. He has no real updates, but he does hope to have uh, a solid draft updated for the March timeframe. Uh, all right, so that brings us to any other business. Uh, David, you wanted to talk about NTS pool work? Yeah, so over the past month and a half, out of the top of my head, we've been having some funding to actually build an experimental, uh, to build some experiments around a potential solution for NTS pools that doesn't require clients to um, make any changes. So. To the client, it just looks like there's an NTS endpoint there. You can ask um, for uh, the key, uh, that you can negotiate keys with and get cookies, and then you get an next server that you get pointed to. Um, but that allows multiple backend servers run by multiple people with a more distributed trust model, where not it's you trust all of them at the same time uh, there, there's still a, a, a level of separation uh, of trust between all the, all of them uh, we are now to the point that we've got that working with our in, with our own NTP software um, and it seems to be providing reasonable results um, uh, the, the front end doesn't require any edits to existing standards so clients won't see anything about this but it does require a few things from the servers individually to support this. Um, eventually, if we were to do this fully, um, that would be something I would want to propose a standard for. The big question right now is to what extent is the working group interested in this early stage? Do we want to wait until we have a little bit more of an actual running thing? Uh, or is the, the prototype uh, that we've built now where we do implement a few extensions to NTS uh, key negotiation, is there interest in already seeing that stage right now? Uh, I, for one, Watson, I, I, for one, would be interested in seeing it. Uh, and, you know, if you need help looking at the security of it, I, I definitely can do that. Okay, perhaps to also rephrase the question a bit, is there somebody who thinks this is way too early and then we should just not do this? Because otherwise I'm just gonna see when we have time to push out the draft, but push out something for people to respond to. Um, um, I mean, I, I personally don't think it's too early, but, um, and I, I, I think it's, an issue that NTS needs to address. So um, do any of the other implementers or authors of NTS have a comment? Um, 
Um, um, I, I, I would su suggest that it, this, this changes in the key, uh, key establishment would require an, an update of the NTS draft. Is that correct? It wouldn't necessarily require an update. It's it's basically an extension of what the draft the, the, the draft uh, the NTS uh, protocol specification specifies. So we add some we, we add basically a bunch of records on top that allow us to do this. That allows the pool to be a man in the middle in a certain sense. Um, I, I think the earlier you could get more eyes on it, the better. So I, I yeah. think it would be okay, then, uh, then I'll try to make sure that we either get that out next week or otherwise beginning of next year. Okay. Depends a bit on when people go in with vacations. Uh, I can't make promises right now, but we're, we're close enough that it probably next week. Okay. All right. Is there any other business? Um, okay. With that, um, we will be planning a another virtual interim towards the end of January. Uh, we'll get the dates out as soon as possible. Um, James, I don't remember where. Where are you located? Are you in? Uh, I'm located in the Netherlands. Oh, OK. Um, one of the things at the very end of Harlan's email was a complaint about the time that we've been having these meetings. And so I was going to see if I could move it a bit later um, based on the people that regularly participate. So if we were to move it, an hour or so later, would that cause a hardship for anybody? One or two hours later would be okay, be manageable. Okay. It's nearly 6 p.m. local time, so yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Are there? is there any other business or questions, comments? Uh, all right. Thank you to everybody who reviewed the document so far and everybody else, please, please send in your reviews. Um, and with that, I hope everybody has a lovely holiday. <laughs>